Hello everybody, today we're going to be looking at my new Christmas tree, enjoy. And welcome back. Uh, yes, this is a tree I bought. Um, I'm going to say like early December. Um, from a local garden centre. I think it cost me £10, maybe 12 Can't remember the exact price, but obviously. Typical Christmas tree in one of those red pots, right? Um, and obviously I've already got a Christmas. Well, I call them Christmas trees. They're, they're pious here. Um, a form of spruce tree. Um, I've already got one, but it's like a larger leaf kind of one. I, I believe this is, this might be an Aves, not sure. But yeah, I mean, I, I, there's about 30, 40 of them in the garden centre. And I spotted this one out um, with the trunk and obviously you'll see some issues with it as the video goes along. Um, that I'm trying to work through. Um, Always be polite to your postman. Um, yeah, so you're just going to follow me through on this one. So this is going to be a couple of parts in this video because it took me a long time. Um, most of the video is two times speed because, again, it took me a long time. Um, I'm not exactly fast at doing this stuff still, but... My main aim with this tree right now is to um, just kind of sort out any kind of low branching. Most of the time with any kind of bonsai styling, you want to get rid of some of the low branches. So I believe it's a third. Um, one third of the total height of the tree should just be bare drunk. You know, there's, you can play around with the rules sometimes, but in terms of scale, it's a good way to look at it. There were so many branches on this tree. Um, good in a way, because obviously I could then be selective rather than the tree that's got, you know, two or three branches and you literally have to work with what you've got. I can make a lot of decisions here, but the decision making process was taking me a long time. So you'll see why this video is so cut up and looks a bit choppy. Um, I didn't really want you sitting here for half an hour watching this part, this part of the process. As I say, there'll be a couple more videos to come on this one. Yeah, it actually finishes up. I would say it's probably my best style in to date. Um, again, you can't really make a bonsai in a day, but I did try with this one to go from nursery stock to, I wouldn't call it a finished tree, but where I'd like it to be within about, I think, I, I think I've done this, these videos over three days. It might have been two. Obviously, the beginning of December wasn't too hot. It's just me trying to trim each branch as I go along because it's so bushy. Usually, I would do the whole cleaning process. So I'd go through the whole tree, um, removing things that aren't needed, dead things, you know, all that kind of stuff, crossing branches. Um, and then I'd come back through and do the pads from the bottom to the top with this one. I was doing branches and pads at the same time just to try and remove some foliage so I could actually see what I was doing. At least it's a healthy tree, right?
Now again, the setup has changed, as you'll see. So um, most of my like shohin or mame, um, all the smaller trees I've got, should I say, are either indoors, obviously the tropicals, um, all the outdoor trees that I do will be on the bonsai, on, well, on my workspace, let's call it. I won't really call it a bonsai bench. But yeah, this one had to be done in the bin, just because of the sheer size of it. Um, it probably would have crushed the table that I work on. I also noticed that um, the pot it was in was really quite small. Um, obviously, these are field grown and then just chucked in, you know, cut down, chucked into a pot and then sold off uh, quick over Christmas period, which is fine. But obviously, I want to make sure that after I'm doing all this cutting back, that the tree bounces back strong. So I do end up putting in a bigger pot. And here I'm just applying some cut paste. Now spruce do um, like sap or resin, I suppose. Um, create a lot of sap or resin um, to try and heal their cells. Their cells. <clears throat> the only reason for the cut paste on this one was really because we was going into the winter period. So as I say, this is early December, probably a bit too early to do all this stuff. Um, again, it's a 12 pound tree, right? You know, if it goes wrong, it goes wrong. That's what we do for the art sometimes. But yeah, so I'm, I'm putting cut paste on the bigger cuts just to help the tree and aid it so it doesn't have to create so much sap and resin and lose that energy. Um, it was actually actively still growing at this point. I don't know if you can see from the video, but a lot of them bud tips and that were still pushing out. So I'm guessing this was, as I say, the field grown or grown um, in polytunnels, you know, that kind of stuff. So as you can see here, I've, I've kind of now split this into like a, um, a twin trunk, I suppose, um, more like a mother-daughter style. And that's where this tree eventually ends up going. I've never done one before, so I thought I'd give it a go. It's also quite good to keep that low branch on there just to make that base thicker. As far as I can tell, the roots start just below this, so it isn't like it's deep potted. Um, it's actually quite shallow potted. So I hope, I'm hoping and praying when I come to repot it, um, probably next year, I'll put it into some better soil. I actually play around the roots. So as I said, early December, I didn't want to <laughs> start repotting the tree. Um, and I did think about doing it this spring. Um, I think the issue with that is obviously the cutbacks that I've done, taking a lot of energy away from the tree and then to repot it as well. It probably would survive, I'll be honest, past here quite tough, but I doubt I'd get much good growth for the whole year. Um, so yeah, I'll be leaving that until next spring, but we shall see when that happens. They've surprised me before. And this is me just going through them few pads that I have on the bottom left. Um, the one, the, well, the branch that I think I'll keep. I'm not sure if I actually end up keeping these, to be honest. Um, this is kind of the back of the tree of it, as, I, as I see it. Yeah. In the next couple of videos, you'll see the front that I pick. And the daughter side, so the, the smaller trunk, um, actually goes off to the left instead of the right. So I believe this is just the back of the tree here that I'm trying to sort out. And most of the time at the back of the tree, you'll leave the branches a little bit lower, um, just, to create, just to be able to create some depth, depth. Otherwise, it's just a straight trunk the whole way through, right? And that isn't usually what we see in trees in nature. You know, the whole reason for the daughter side growing would have been a lack of light would have... Um, it would be competing, sorry, with the, with the main trunk. So it wouldn't make much sense to have branches over crossing it, because if the branches were actually crossing the daughter, then the daughter wouldn't grow, right? Usually how it works. Trees compete for light. So that just about wraps up part one of this one. Um, 
I'm hoping to try and make it a two part. It might end up being a three part. Uh, but we will see. And uh, I hope to see you around for the next one.